welcome everyone, everyone who's with their cameras off and the ones that with their cameras on. It, I, I want to say that as a as a speaker and as a, a space holder, it really helps me to to connect with you if you have your videos on. And if you don't want to have it, that is also totally fine. And you are welcome wherever you are and whatever uh, circumstance or background or um, yeah, if you're in a cafe or anything, you are you are welcome. Like John Paul said, I I'm an aliveness catalyst, and you know it, already I you know how many aliveness catalysts that put on their CV or their you know in the immigration visa um, little the 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 space for profession put aliveness catalysts. I I think not many people in the world. And this is, in a way, it just shows how how we are brought to think about education and work and profession and our relationship with the world. That we have lawyers, there's doctors, there's plumbers, there's uh, writers, there's uh, litigators, there's, what about aliveness catalysts? What about uh, warrior distinguishers? What about um, circle alchemists? What, what about the, the actual jobs, the, the tasks, the professions that are going to be needed in next culture? And when I say next culture is the culture that naturally emerges after patriarchy has run its course. So there was matriarchy and then patriarchy. And we are, you know, what we were walking, we were moving towards an, a next culture. And I consider that patriarchy is already Moribun is dying and it's way past its um, expiration day. And so I know that there is a lot of people working towards transforming the current culture system. And what I work is to create bridges to the culture that is emerging, that is coming. And I call it uh, next culture. And but basically it's um, about archi archi. So where the archetypal principles of each human being on earth is moving through the world, that each human can be a space through which their the bright principles, the love, clarity, integrity, possibility, inspiration, teamwork, community, intimacy can work its way in the world. And that's what, uh, and you can learn more about this in uh, the over 500 websites that are part of this online free to play transformational game called startover.xyz. There's a lot of experiments and games and so that you can just uh, go discover what I'm talking about with next culture and, and co-creating the bridges to next culture. I'm here because I, I love learning and I hated school. I didn't hate the uh, part of school that was about my friends. I didn't hate it about uh, going into to make, meet people, even meet teachers. But what I hated about school was how far removed it was from real life. And I became passionate about uh, how, what, what I wanted when I saw life around me, where I saw society around me, I thought, gosh, if we can put human beings on the moon, if we can send these probes out into the universe, is this society the best that we can come up with? Surely, surely we're so smart enough that we can put these probes out there. We can go into other galaxies and we still have war. What the hell's going on that we still have war in this day and age? And so I set out to find, okay, what can I, how can I make the most impact with the, with the knowledge that we have? And I found that actually education, you know, would go to the, the root cause. Like if we, if we change the education, if we um, start educating the children, they'll start making different behaviors and we will change society at large. But actually, before children go to school, they already have learned how to think. 
you know, if, if you go to school, if you're allowed to go to school, you already have been indoctrinated in the current culture's way of thinking. I'm calling it thoughtware. Thoughtware as in there's software and hardware of a device. And we have something called thoughtware, which is what we use to think with. Now we go to school, people go to school to think about something, to create content, but they hardly ever questions what, the, what are the structures, what are the things that they use, that the human beings use to think with about whatever, whatever it is. And so actually to change really to get new results, new behavior so that we can really maybe prepare for actually what is coming, prepare for what is coming with the climate change, the maybe potentially the whole collapse of a lot of essential systems for supporting life on this planet, especially human life. If we want to change, if we want to prepare, if you want to um, live in, in a way that we can extend our, our, our life on this planet, we need to change really how we think, how we think about what we think about. And so this got me to the to talk about what is education and actually what is initiation so first of all initiation is for me defined as a a process after which the person the participant of that initiation is capacitated to take more responsibility than previously before there's a dying of something and a rebirth of something, but the end result of an authentic adulthood initiatory process is that the person after that is capacitated to take more responsibility than before. And I'm talking about responsibility because it is seen almost as this dirty word in current culture. Responsibility is seen as a burden, as something that is too much, it's overwhelming. And that is part of the thought where if you think that responsibility is a burden, it's undesirable, it's overwhelming, of course, you're not going to take responsibility. So part of the changing of the thought where for instead of in education and outside education is to change the thought where about how we think about responsibility, how do we think about the earth, how we think about your, ourselves. So well, when we think about, and I'm, I'm going to ask you these questions, like questions really for you. What are the, some of the assumptions of education? Can you tell me? Like everyone, Bandil, Emma, Javed, Marcella, even the ones who don't have the video on, could you tell me one, two assumptions of education? Are you saying exemptions, like they don't, they're not included? No, assumptions. Oh, assumptions. Assumptions. What are some of the main assumptions of education? That it will better equip kids to live in this society. Okay, so that it can, that you're, yes, that you can better equip people to live in this society. Also, Joe Decker says that one of the assumptions is to enter a, comp a competitive workforce. It prepares you to enter a competitive workforce. Any, any other assumptions? That learning is measurable and that there's kind of a hierarchy, like you move through the grades. Yes, yes. So it's that, that learning actually happens in a hierarchical culture. Some people know, some people don't, like the teachers know, that's an assumption, and that the students don't know, that's another assumption. Yes, Bandil, specializing, limiting, refining, that, that, that it's about, that education is about specializing, for example. And this competition that Joe, that you mentioned, not only in the competitive workforce, but it, it learning happens in competition with your peers, the people that you're forming friendships with, that's who you're going to compete with first. 
And it's heartbreaking. It can be really heartbreaking. Uh, there's an assumption that, um, this is Kim, there's an assumption that um, most subjects can be learned in a linear fashion. Like you learn the lowest, leanest part first or the smallest part. Like you have to learn addition before you can learn calculus, for instance. Yes. Yeah, that there's a yes. linear that there's a linear, linear process that's important. There is a linear process and it's a predictable, um, yes. it's a formula that you can just apply. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Emma says also that most all of students learn this particular way. Like again, this formula, this is the way. And if you don't learn this way, then you're not a good learner. Joe also says that another assumption is that students should be grouped with others in their same age. Exactly. And so you, I'm, I'm glad that you already um, are so aware of some of the main assumptions of, of education. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a few ones that are usually not spoken so much about in alternative fields of education. One is that knowing, like a huge ed education assumption is that knowing has value, that knowing is the most valuable thing. And this exempts, basically it excludes all other kind of like intellectual knowing is as the most biggest value and knowing something, understanding something has the biggest value. And first this excludes uh, people knowing in other ways than not intellectual first, and it excludes a being with the world and being with life, being with another human being, another tree being, another water body being in a way that is not understandable at all, but it, it, it excludes the value of being with, it excludes the value of witnessing, excludes the value of, of, of being completely present, of presencing without understanding. So if you, if you have been, um, basically encouraged to understand everything, to know everything, that at some point in your life is going to be a block, a limitation for your being with things that are unknowable or completely ununderstandable, like huge mysteries of the universe, of, of intimacy, of relationships, of family, of community making. Another assumption is that this the the teachers are adults and the children so that the teachers are adults and can hold space for the children this is an assumption that because of a person in the culture basically is over 18 or over 21 that they are adults that they're people that have the capacity to hold space for other people's transformation uh, and human beings that are really learning how to be human. You know, this, that education, that, that teachers basically have, have the, the, the personal, not just a professional, but the personal internal cons, um, competences to hold that space. And what I'm talking about is that it takes adults to make adults. And I'm putting here on this space that most people on this earth are not adults. Because when a child makes a mess, who cleans it up? Can someone tell me? When a child makes a mess, who cleans it up? Adults. Yes, the parents, or yeah. a lot of the times the mother, because yeah. most people live in a patriarchal culture. And so the messes that are happening globally all over the world, all over the world, you know, radioactive um, trash, basically waste, the, the, all this like islands made of plastic, exporting the trash from the first world countries, like European countries, North American countries, to other countries, is export the trash. It's basically... The most civilized cultures are the most child level responsibility cultures in the world because they make messes with absolutely no intention of cleaning them up. 
let the next generations clean them up, let the other countries clean them up, let uh, poor people or people far away basically deal with the consequences with the messes that I'm creating. This, this means really that most people on the planet are completely disallowed to take more responsibility than child level responsibility. I give my authority for another person to take care of this, this, and this in my life, for taking care of the, the sewages, for taking care of um, how schools are made, for taking care of how relationships happen, for taking care of how money happens in society. It's all about putting the responsibility on another person. The modern code, current the modern culture completely disallows taking responsibility. And, I, and it takes adults to make other adults. Now, another uh, one last assumption that I wanna talk about education is that, that I already alluded to, is that it is only, that only the intellectual body is that what is the most valued in, in the world. And, and I see countries that have such amazing traditions and, and cultures of, 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 feel, of understanding of, of being with the world through their physical body or through their feelings, through completely different interfaces than just and solely the intellectual body. And so actually feelings, emotions, do not have space in education. It's a, because they also don't have, there's no space for feelings and emotions really in a conscious or responsible way in the workplace. And so the emotional body has no nourishment, doesn't get developed. And people are, most people are fumbling around being, trying to be competent with their own emotional um, body basically. And so a lot of people are actually stunned, like totally shunned in, in their own uh, emotional responsibility. And also there's another body that is hardly ever spoken. It's the energetic body. I mean, I know that there's a lot of conversations about energies and I'm talking about it, the energetic body is your sense of personal space, your sense of timing, of tempo, of of, of, of ownership of this is mine, this is my space, this is you, and it's different. There's a, there's, this is where I end and this, this is where you begin. And without this sense of, of this is my personal space, a lot of people have enmeshment, they fuse themselves with another person, they're not clear about their boundaries, and they cannot protect basically or, or be in their own space. And so that they cannot create what they want to create in the world. They are too influenced by the world outside. And so I wanna shift. What would be, instead of having education happening, instead of having systems of education, what if we had centers for initiation where the, the focus would not be to prepare people to live and adapt and be obedient, basically obedient psychopaths in this, modern culture world, but it would be to create, to capacitate adult creators. You know, there's, there's all these technologies out there. There's, there's so, so much potential out there, but for, it, for a person, for someone to hold space for another person to truly transform, not to fill them up with information, but to truly create a space of transformation for another person, then that person needs to do what is impossible for that person. If I wanna do something that I've never done before, that's kind of almost an impossible thing. So to, to do the impossible, you need to see the invisible. You need to see the potential and you need to create, to, to, to hold a space so dangerous for the status quo of that person so that they can become someone someone that, that can do the things that they want to do. And this process of transformation of initiation is completely, completely different than education. It's not about you learn A and then you learn B 
and then you get A and B. It's not linear. It because it breaks completely the the already formed habits of before. Transformation is a three phase process where you have a shape, shape A, and to get to, into a completely different shape, you go through a liquid state. And this liquid state means that all of this solid, um, solid certainties, habits, beliefs have to be melted away. And most of education is about constructing solidity more solidness and and then with this base of knowledge we put on this because this is so sure and so certain and we we'll put another thing on top and, and then the the value is in confidence the value of people in the world to talk is about confidence i confidence is a trick of your psychology and i don't have confidence i have reliance i have reliance on the experience the direct experience that I've had with the world that does not come from theories and does not come from uh, philosophy. So basically everything that I'm talking about comes from over 30 years of direct empirical experimentation. So that you know that I'm, please don't believe anything that I'm saying. You know, if you are interested, go do your, your own research. There's loads of resources out there. So there's three phases. Phase, phase one, you have one shape, phase two, there's a liquid state and phase three is you have a new shape. But throughout the initiation path, you spend, the, the, the human beings are designed to spend less and less time solid, less and less time um, crystallizing their certainty and more and more time in the liquid state where it's not comfortable, but it, it's freeing, where so many nonlinear resources, so many archetypal forces can move you and can inspire you. Now, to form real creators, to shape and to, to, to basically hold space so that creators exist in this world is it's almost going against society. That's why it's completely disallowed because if I'm, if, if I hold space for people to take a stand for a completely different kind of society, that would totally undermine the current system. That current totally undermines the current system, which is totally appropriate. The, the education system, the current mainstream education system is over 150 years old. And how can we still allow people to be formed with a system that was supposed to form people 150 years ago, and we're still using that same system. Most schools in the whole world, doesn't matter the country. The new people, the new creators of society, it is appropriate and required that they undermine the current system, that they question it, that they change it, so that society, so that uh, the whole culture can evolve. And, you know, there's, there's a, a couple of books and articles about education is a, a subversive activity. I don't think so. Initiation is a subversive activity. I'm going to show you guys a video. It's a, it's a short video. I'm going to just show a, a couple of minutes. It's a, it's a seven minute video, and I'm going to show you just a couple of minutes. And I'm going to ask you if you have, if you have done any of this. It has music.
I want to pause here. You know, there's six other minutes of this. All of these lines are initiations that are possible right now on this planet. And one of them that I was just reading is taking your authority back from companies, politics, religion, lawyers, media, and society. Just gonna stop the sharing. How many people here have taken their authority back from the from the, the politics system, from, from the money system? How many people here have taken your authority back from the health system, from the current health system? Meaning this, yeah, thank you. How many people here have taken your authority back from the taxation system? What I mean here with taking my, your authority back is that you take, you take the back, the, instead of giving your authority and responsibility for taking care of these things in your life and, and give it to some external authority to take care of that for you, that you, you take care of this. You are the source of that thing in your life. Most people in the world have not have not taken authority from marketing agencies, from the, the, the spiel of TV and advertisement. And without that, that, this is one of the works that I do the most, the most often is rage clubs. Rage clubs are spaces where people can, when you can connect consciously with this energy, emotional energy, that is neither bad, it's neither good. It's just like having a left arm. It's not good or bad to have a left arm. It can be useful. And how you use it can define what results you have. But in modern culture, feelings are not okay. Anger is seen mostly as aggressive, dangerous, uh, crazy for women. And actually, if you change that thought where into anger, is a source of energy and information about my life, you can have access to a lot of clarity because what you're angry about is what you care about. And it turns out that what you care about that deeply that you're pissed off is actually, is really shapes what you came here on earth to create. Because this is also one of the consequences of, of current mainstream education is that it will be provided for me. There should be a path and so that I know what I, I want to do. And it's actually, no, you are a creator. You're not a path follower. You are a creator. And if you want to know what's your mission here on earth, get really pissed off. Go to a rage club, get archetypally pissed off, 100% intensity pissed off so that you say the things that are so important to you and you have the energy to create them in the world. Because that's what anger is made for. It's made to deal with things, to create things, to stop things, to, so that you can say yes. So you can say, no, I don't want this. Stop. So you can initiate the projects that you want. All these things, this, this fundamental, fundamental uh, resource that you have inside of your body, just for virtue of being a human being, not doesn't matter how old you are, which, con which country you were brought in, you have this in you. And no education system that I am aware of all around the world, and I have seen, I have studied many, deal or tap into the internal resources of the feelings and emotions of the human being, of the four feelings, anger, sadness, fear, and joy. And it's incredible that we are on this earth and we, do, we have so much treasure inside of us. And there's, we go to school to learn about things and we don't really learn about ourselves. And so initiation center education, it, it actually in, an initiation center based learning, it is not about serving uh, the current status quo. It's about creating 
the earth, the planet, the culture, the, the society that we do really want to live in. So right now, and I, there are people in the world that are initiators, not only in possibility management, which is in the game world of a field of research that I'm part of, but there are so many different initiators. And that after those processes, it doesn't, it's not about, if you go through an authentic adulthood initiation, you don't really, it's not about, oh, now I learn, I now I know this piece of information. It's you, the whole shape of you changes. Every, every part of you that you that that is relating to other people and the world changes so that you can look at the world in a different way. So you can create results that you couldn't create before. And you don't you don't lose this stuff that you had access to. You just expand. You just expand. There are, I want to talk about five possible initiations that super easy, super accessible to everyone on this planet, basically, right now. And, and I, after that, I want to make a proposal, actually. I want to make a challenge for everyone here and for the organizers of this conference. Because, gosh, this we don't have um, that much time. You know, there's this song, which is, you, you think you have more time than you actually do. But we, we don't have that much time before you know, most scientists are saying that it's not even possible, it's not possible anymore to reverse climate change. That's what the most recent IPCC panel is, is saying, basically, without trying to scare everybody, that it is not possible to reverse. And I don't know, like, no, no one knows, but we don't have that much time. And so what, what are you going to do with the time left that you have in the world? Are you going to conform and follow uh, the, the given path? Or are you going to follow the, the impulses, the deep impulses that, that come from within you and come through you that don't, don't come from a, a, a society program, but that are absolutely needed to serve Gaia. And when I call it Gaia is the consciousness, the general field of consciousness of the planet Earth. Okay, It's not a spirit or anything. It's the consciousness, the general field of consciousness of planet Earth. And so there are spaces right now in the world that are ready to hold these kind of initiations. One of them is, is global, is completely global and international, and it's free. And it's the startover.xyz game. This is, it's, 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 it's not like a normal computer game. It's a collection of over 500 free websites that contain distinctions and experiments that you can do by yourself or with some friends. And you can do it at home, you can do it on, at your work, you can do it in the grocery store, you can do it while um, planting some, uh, some seeds. You can do it anywhere, as long as you have some kind of access to internet. And it's a game that it's transformational, that it's not about just reading the website it's gonna change your life, is if you do one experiment and you see the results of that experiment, that, that really changes your life. Every single person that has gone through this game has incredible results. And we're collecting a, um, basically a, a website of just testimonials. So this is one one way that you can already start initiating yourself. Number two is to, to, to form or go to a bridge house or, or start a bridge house. And a bridge house is a, is a place, a physical place where people can experiment about what it is, what, what it is to create next culture. They help each other to get out of patriarchy, to go through emotional healing processes, to, to make experiments of how to relate consciously and in a completely different way. They create their own traditions. It's not about 
um, casting away any kind of tradition that exists, but it's mostly about creating new traditions, creating new forms of relating, creating new forms of, of um, gaining new knowledge, gaining new uh, discoveries. And they're at the edge of modern culture because you cannot have modern culture, or you cannot have next culture inside modern culture. You cannot have the next culture, archiarchy, inside the current patriarchal, imperialistic, capitalistic culture. So er every single one of these initiators, initiation spaces are at the edges of modern culture, at the fringes of modern culture. And that's where the Bridge House stays. So there's a website called bridgehouse.mystrikingly.com and I, I can send, uh, if anyone's interested, you can, you can go to startover.xyz and search or spaceport.mystrikingly.com, which has a list of all of the over 500 websites. It's like a, having an index for all of these portals of transformation. And so you search bridge house and you see the bridge houses that exist and also that are starting this, these guidebooks of how to start your bridge house, how to start your team that is for escaping the patriarchy and building something new. So that was, that was number one, and then bridge house number two. Number three, there are trainers all over the world, space holders all over the world that are delivering rage clubs. So what I told you about, because rage, starting with uh, changing your relationship to your, with your anger, means that you, we start with anger and not with sadness or joy or fear first, because the anger is the energy that can protect you so that you can go further, go to scarier places because you know what you are a yes to or you are a no to. And so many people all over the world, they do not have an authentic yes or an authentic no. So if you cannot, if you do not have the possibility of saying no to something or someone, then your yes is a lie. And so this, the Rage Club takes a stand for people to find their authentic yes, authentic no, and communicate it and stand by it, to take a stand. And so these spaces, Rage Clubs happen online, offline. Uh, they can be a whole day, they can be a few hours, can be over a whole month meeting weekly in teams that are learning to feel consciously. And these spaces are not about talking about anger. They're about getting pissed off. They're about grabbing, grabbing a pillow, grabbing a towel and screaming and actually getting angry. Not those, this kind of emotional intelligence uh, spaces, which is only about talking. So there's rage clubs, so that's number three. Then there's this initiation spaces for fear clubs. Fear is the most taboo feeling of modern culture, mainstream society. Because I mean, there's books about it's either fear or love, but if you're scared, then you're not to be taken seriously. Fear is bad. That means something bad is happening to us. But actually fear is, the source, the biggest source of your intuition, the biggest source of, of, of being for you to be able to walk in the unknown, which by the way, is life. Life is unknowable, it's unpredictable. But if you use your fear consciously, you can navigate, you can navigate life. It doesn't mean that it, nothing ever bad or uncomfortable or undesirable will happen to you. But it means that you do not need to rely on the, on the prisons of your own expectations, of your own, oh, it has to happen like this, otherwise I can't deal with it. No, you have other instruments to navigate life, to navigate relationship. I mean, without fear, intimacy is basically dead. If you don't have fear, how do you know if you're going too fast or too slow or that you're touching that person in where they want or if you're giving enough time for them to, to say yes? If you don't use your fear, then you might just interrupt someone when they were 
just starting to unfold for the first time maybe in their lives the thing that is most precious to them and they were going to unfold it to you but because you didn't have fear you just basically ran over them so fear is it's like magic you know if, when i grew up I, maybe some of you grew up with some books about magic and wizards and things like that the closest thing of that of that energy of that tool of magic of creating something where it wasn't possible before is really fear the information for scanning for holding space for intuition all of that comes from fear and these spaces for initiating that part of you that that access that 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 resource that you have inside of you just by virtue of being a human being alive a sentient being is available since you were born so that's number four. Number five, there are space holders all over the world, trainers that are delivering this thing called expand the box training. And this is just one of the many initiations that is possible. You know, there's vision quests, there's temascals. I mean, every ancient culture used to have its initiation processes. But the thing is that the culture changed. There was patriarchy, there was colonialism. And so most of these old, older, more ancient initiations, they were meant to initiate the young people into the context of the village, into the context of a community that was noble and it was tightly knit. Now, most of these communities don't exist in the same way, not even in the indigenous communities. There's so much disruption. There's so much hurt and trauma. And, 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 and so what I'm, and I'm not here to take any of these initiation processes of other cultures. These initiations that I'm talking about are initiations that are appropriate for this day and age to create a next culture, not to go back to any culture, not to nothing like that, to create a next culture, the next culture that we need, that we actually need. And these, this training that I'm talking about, this fifth one is called Expand the Box. And it's usually a, a residential three to five days. And it has most of these initiations of rage, of fear, of, of changing the way that you think about yourself and the world, really questioning what is responsibility and is it a burden? And what are the results in your life if you consider responsibility a burden? And what are the results in your life if you consider uh, responsibility a force of freedom and creation? And this, and these are, this is practical. These are practical, uh, effective initiations. And after this, you are completely different. So, and I'm, I, I can list them in a, my website or with the, a copy of this recording so that people have access to these, uh, to these links. But this is what I think is really missing in the world. I mean, we, we spend, most people spend 12, 13 years in school. Or a lot of people in like the global north, they spend like 12 years in school. But even in the global south, there's a lot of years spent in school. And it, what if instead of learning how to, how to be obedient to the current status quo of your tradition, of your, of your culture, you could be a creator. It doesn't mean that you'd have to destroy everything, but you would create something appropriate. And this path of learning, you know, usually in education, you go to a certain degree, you know, degree, and then you stop because then you work, you go to work, you have a, a secondary degree, you can work as a whatever a kind of labor, a kind of professional, you have a higher degree, then you can work in other kind of professions. And then it, it, it stops this formal education. Well, with the initiation path, it never ends. It's really about being fully 
who you are meant to be as a multidimensional being in the world, to find your vocation and that and to know that your vocation does not fit, is not meant to fit in the current system. It is not meant to fit. And so the, the path for unleashing this potential cannot come from the current system. It just cannot come. And so I end here, and I'd like to hear questions or comments if you have. I end here with a, a challenge for ecoversities for this conference to change the purpose to, to really change the purpose of this conference to, to not be about knowing to not be about informing but to be about transforming to be about action to be really about getting these new results so it's not about presentation it's about activation it's about initiation and to, to really sending, I'm sending this, the, this challenge to every single institution, organization, NGO to stop educating and start initiating people into more responsibility, into taking more responsibility than they ha you have previously done before. You, you don't have to know how it goes. No, having to know how it goes is a limitation from education system, but you can take a stand and move without knowing. And that causes transformation. Thank you so much for this space. Would you please share with me if you have any questions? Thank you very much, uh, Vera. All the presentation is really, really wonderful and intriguing. And um, we are closing in nine minutes, actually. If you have questions and supplement that you may want to make, you can share and chat and uh, well, be able to share. John Paul, would, would you give two minutes for people actually, if they have any question that they can ask right now? Yeah, yeah two, two to five minutes within Thank you. nine minutes. That's eight minutes. Yeah. Sure. Just place the questions in the chat. And people will be able, to, uh, Vera will be able to respond to that. Thanks. I'm sending a few links on the chat as well to just start on your journey of if you want to know more about this, because we need more people. We basically need everyone if we're going to to change our culture. Yeah, sure. I have a question. Um... So you're saying that these these five possible initiations are like good starting places and I'm I'm pretty like deep into the same type of study and I'm just curious if you're suggesting that these are ways of like becoming fully initiated adults or you're just suggesting that these are starting places cuz yeah I'm saying that an initiation based path is never over. And right. so it's also never like, okay, I'm, I'm perfectly adult. I don't have any thing. It's not about perfectionism. That's again, right. another, but it's these really start you off and, and particularly the expand the box training is, uh, is one that it gives, I've never seen a training that gives the most base so mm -hmm. that you can work on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, can you say a little bit more about the expand the box training? Yes, I'm sending a, a link uh, already to a little bit about what it is. And, and so I also want to, I know that Kim, you also have a question. So expand oh, the box yeah. training is the basic, basic training just to start questioning your thought work about things. It just starts to capacitate you to, to really, not just in your mind, but to experience, experience yourself, your life in a completely different way that most people don't think they have access to. So it goes through basic distinctions and practices. Usually there's, we deliver that there's a map, which is a, a map that is discovered in that moment. And then we go into practices and it, it's in the practice that the magic 
really, really happens. And so I, I can't, re- I don't want to say what happens in there because it, it, most people just then think, oh yeah, I got, I know what it is, or I got, get what it is. But what I can say is that, you know, I, I've lived 10 years in Finhorn, uh, which is a big mm-hmm. eco-spiritual community. And so every method that goes there, goes there since whatever, since Eckhart Tolle, like everyone who's into consciousness just basically goes there. And I had never seen something that was so radically transforming people. Like I have, mm-hmm. a, I had a friend of mine who basically he was, he was a young friend. He was born in the community. He had a lot of communication skills, but he seemed to me like a kind of a, a boy in a body of a man after a week away in a, in the global eco village conference, where there was an expand the box training offered freely, completely freely offered to the young people there, he came back and he was a different man. Mm. And that's when I thought, what what the hell happened to you? Okay. So check the website for, for the, for a few more things uh, about the expand the box. And and Kim, you asked basically, where does spirit and spirituality come in, into initiation in this context? Well, for me, the, the context is radical responsibility. The context that I'm talking about is not child level responsibility, other people clean my mess. It's not even adult level responsibility, which is I clean only the mess that I make, or not even higher level responsibility, which is I clean some of the mess that I that other people make when I want to, and sometimes I don't do it. It's radical responsibility, which is what I'm responsible for everything. I That means I am the source for anything to happen in the world. And I have a choice. And it doesn't mean perfectionism. It also means about I make a mess. I clean it up in all of the ways that I can. And that I'm, I'm able to, and I'm in this constant learning. And spirit or spirituality usually come from contexts that have uh, certain beliefs or certain um, just different traditions in different languages. I, for me, it would I I don't I don't deal in the realm of spirit necessarily. I mean, I have my own experiences with communication with the earth where I have really real uh, answers like practical answers to uh, uh, when communicating with with different elements with communicating with different parts uh, but I don't put it into a, a system a belief system of spirit or spirituality what what I what the work that I do and which is possibility management is about, really activating your own non-material value in the world and and through the five bodies and this means that every everything that i'm sharing comes from an empirical discovery and so if you have experiences with spirituality you know usually it depends you know spirituality is a name that can mean so many things and this is why i i don't necessarily use it because spirituality uh, in some traditions, it means uh, death of ego or uh, to reach a place with, with uh, joy, more joy or more happiness. And so, and, and this is not about that at all. It's about joy, sadness, fear, and anger are all feelings, emotions that we are needed to be alive. It's about being the space, human beings are designed to be the space through which qualities, universal qualities can exist in the world. So I I tend to not speak in spirit terms and maybe your experience that you have is translated in just another way. It's just that the word spirit is, doesn't have a lot of distinctions and possibility management is actually very clear on distinctions, but we can have a a bigger conversation about that because I would need to know what you mean more about uh, spirituality. Yeah, but that definitely that there's bigger archetypal forces at work than just our own agendas. 